Capturing moments like this is amazing. One of my best memories from Africa. It is also something that can be sold online, which is a good idea for traveling creators such as myself. Starting with stock can be a great idea as a beginner filmmaker. And when you get that first sale, that is an amazing, amazing feeling. In this video, I'll share five basic tips on how you can get started selling stock footage yourself. These random clips are from my portfolios that I've built since I started selling stock footage in 2018. Here are some tips for you. Tip number one is to make a list. Make a list of what you like to do. It can be your hobbies, your passions, maybe even your work. And start asking yourself, is this something I can film? And the short answer to that is yes. Like this time lapse I made of bread dough, proofing in a glass jar overnight. This was from when I decided to learn how to bake bread. I thought why not kill two birds in one stone and make some stock video from the process as well. Oh, and it turned out great. Look at this time lapse. I mean, <clears throat> anything is filmable and whatever it is that you are thinking about filming, there is a market for exactly that. I guarantee it. More and more companies these days uses stock footage because the quality is also rising. And it is much cheaper for companies or whoever wants to buy your clips to buy them as stock, as opposed to hiring a videographer to get that exact same clip. I spend a lot of time in Africa, so wildlife was a natural portfolio for me to build first. Think about where you spend your own time and how you can start building a portfolio from there. This clip actually sold just three weeks after making it, which is the quickest sale I've had to date. It's a very niche category and a quick search on the stock agency sites showed me that there wasn't a lot of clips just like this. Niche portfolios made from home. Great idea and easy to do. Tip number two, go through dusty old hard drives. See if you can find anything on there that is worth selling as stock. Landmarks like this are always a good idea to have in your portfolio. Or drone shots from your hometown, if you have a drone. Just make sure the footage is stable, in focus and have smooth movements. Going through old drives was how I got started. And that's also how I found this clip of a mountain in South America. That clip alone has earned me just over $300 with multiple sales. By the way, you don't lose any rights to your own footage, at least not on the platform I use, that I will get back to in just a bit. Tip number three is to make shot lists. Have a plan. Let's say you found a niche for your first portfolio and you're ready to start filming. Make sure you have a plan, so you can make different shots from the scene, like wide shots, medium shots, and close-ups. And sometimes you capture something truly amazing, and in this case, nerve-wracking moments that speaks for themselves. No cameras were harmed in the incident, by the way, my Africa vlogs will be on the channel at some point soon, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe. Also squeeze the bell button to be notified when new videos are up. Let's get back to a safer environment. So let's say a customer would want to buy a clip of this guy sitting at a table drawing. Maybe that customer would want more clips of the same scene. Which would increase the chance of sales by having a diverse range of clips from the same activity. This might not be the best example of what I would make to sell as stock. But you get my point. And you never really know. Maybe someone needs something exactly like this to illustrate another point. Just like I did here. If you use a model in your stock footage, even if it is yourself, like in this example, you need to have a model release. And that you will find on the platform I use. Which brings us on to tip number four. I use a platform called Blackbox. It is a great platform for people starting out selling stock footage, as you can find people to collaborate with on the different aspects of stock footage. I'll link to the site in the description so you can go check it out yourself, because they have all the details on the technicalities in a very good user guide. They also have an excellent Facebook group where you can get good honest opinions on your clips, and you can post your showreel there to find and attract potential collaborators that can, for example, do your metadata and descriptions and color correcting. And you may ask, 
that must cost a fortune, but it doesn't. Your curators or your collaborators on Blackbox, they don't get anything until the clip is sold. So you share, you give them a share percentage of potential sales in the future. That means also, again, you have to have good quality footage because good quality footage will attract good quality curators or experienced curators to do good metadata for you. Blackbox just makes it so much easier for people starting out. You can focus on what you like to do. For me, that is filming and filmmaking. You can nail it one thing at a time. So over time, when you want to do keywording and metadata, you can do that yourself. Personally, when I have edited clips or a batch of clips, I just ship them off to people to do my metadata for me because I want people that are much better than me to give the clips, my clips, the attention they deserve when it comes to metadata because it's so important. And by the way, quality is king. You can have the best metadata in the world, but if your clips aren't good quality, doesn't help. They all have to go hand in hand, like good quality clips and good quality metadata. Think like a potential customer and ask yourself if you would buy this clip. You can easily research different genres by searching on the different stock sites to see what's out there and think about how you can do that better or more creatively. When it comes to the technicalities, Blackbox has an excellent user guide that will help you how to export your footage from your editing software of choice to how to upload to Blackbox. I obviously can't go into all the nitty gritty details in this video as it is just an intro on how you can get started yourself with selling stock footage. Tip number five or point number five is gear. We all love to hear about gear, we love to talk about gear, and we love to discuss what gear do we need for this or that. And the truth is, you don't need that much gear. You can start with just your phone, I promise you. And that is an amazing start because you don't have to think about learning how to use new cameras, big expensive cameras. You can start by just pushing the button on your phone, so much easier. And you can learn some camera movements with just your phone. Plenty of people do that and this particular clip shot handheld with my old iPhone 7 back in 2018 just recently sold for $38 one and a half years later. So that's amazing. You just might be sitting on a gold mine. I use a GH5 and a Lumix S1 with different lenses, a drone and my phone. But like I said, if you only have your phone, that's perfectly fine to start with. Remember the handheld parrot shot I used my old iPhone 7 to get. So there you go. That's five very basic steps for getting started. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also squeeze that bell button to be notified when I have new videos up here. I will for sure make more tip videos and tutorials like this. Cheers for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. For this video, I st oh, spent so much time trying to nail my script without having to look at it. So I was nearly going crazy inside that studio. <sighs> if you are a person that wants to... While I was recording a video about, about making money on stock footage, got this message right here. And it says, you have new black box earnings. I got a sale.